Welcome to Hope Today. Happy April. We're all glad that April is here. Welcome, April. I'm so glad. I get so excited, Anna. I I'm know. Tom Hollis. Anna Fry is <laughs> with me. Sydney is off today, but uh, you know, I just love this time of year. Yeah, I mean, it's wonderful. Spring is here. The air is getting warmer, and we are just so glad that you're joining with us today. We our goal, our heart, is to bring you substance that inspires your faith, that draws you closer to God, and of course, brings hope and encouragement into your day, Tom. I know, and we have got a great interview that Cindy did earlier with three people, Elizabeth Tamfuk, Jane Hammond, and Jamie Galloway, all in the prophetic. They're going to be talking about the things that, that God has laid upon their heart. You're going to learn about what just what's coming up in the, in the, you know, in this time period that we live in. Yeah, absolutely. And talking too about how when generations run together, that more can be accomplished in our faith. And I don't know about you, but I've had mentors all through my life, women yeah. who are, you know, maybe five years older, a decade or a couple decades older. And they have like a depth with the Lord or just more experience in life that they come alongside and encourage me in my faith. And I've tried to do that to the women coming up underneath of me. There's so much power and value when generations oh, run man, together. When generations are together. We shouldn't really separate ourselves, but you'll hear so much more about that. And I agree with you. Uh, and I've had so many people input things into my life that, mm -hmm. that brought me to this place. But we wanted to do a quick update. Uh, as you know, we were able to uh, partner with Philip Cameron's ministry, Orphan's Hands, who is, they are helping the, uh, orf the uh, refugees that are coming across the border from Ukraine and into Moldova. And he has sent us a video update. Hey, CTVN, I love you guys. I want to thank you for your giving. Your gift of $10,000 has allowed us to buy food for one day to feed broken families coming from Ukraine into Moldova. There are millions of refugees. In Moldova alone, there are 350,000. This little bankrupt country, bankrupt before the war, its systems are failing. One of our house parents is on emergency response, government emergency response team and they are saying they don't know how long they can sustain. Your giving, your kindness, allowed us to feed countless people that are pouring across the border. A mother says goodbye to her husband, and kids say goodbye to their dad at the border. And she turns away from everything she's known and walks towards a row of tents in a muddy field. Gone. The money in her pocket is Ukrainian, it won't spend in Moldova. And in this row of tents, there's a bunch of kids that were once orphans. And the orphans' hands are there, and they're cooking warm soup and sandwiches. And they're crying and laughing and loving broken people. And then a bus shows up, and all those people just get into a bus, no tickets, no idea where the bus is going. It's just away from the frontier. And the last thing they get from us is one of our boys goes in with great big Ziploc bags with fruit and, and feminine products and hygiene things and um, tells them it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We've just bought a thousand blankets and um, they're, they're gone, almost gone now. And we're going to believe God for another thousand next week. It's $20,000 $20 a blanket. And then we're giving that to all the refugee camps. We had them specially made. These are huge blankets, heavy blankets. That is the only comfort that many mom will have to wrap our babies in. We discovered um, that we, we have known for, for years in, in, in Ukraine, there are churches that we partner with. And we discovered that they can still get to the border. And these pastors are driving from Kiev at great risk to themselves. And we're giving them food on a regular basis. That they're feeding their church. And um, also we give them a ton of blankets. We, we fill their van. And um, at the same time, we realized and discovered there were some Bibles in Ukraine we could buy. So they're buying Bibles for us, taking them up to the border. And we're swapping out. We're giving them blankets and food. And they're giving us Bibles. 
So now when we give a, a blanket out to an orphan, uh, uh, sorry, to a refugee in, in Moldova, we give them a blanket and a Bible. It's the only hope they have is Jesus. So I just wanted to call, make this short video and thank you for your kindness. Tom, your response was amazing. It was noble how the whole team at CTVN helped us. And I pray that God's blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow be your portion. Pray for us. This is only beginning. This is going to take years to pass. And your kindness and your grace is right there in the middle of the storm. God will honor you and give it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We love you. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Uh, I, with Philip, want to thank you for partnering with Cornerstone. That enables us to uh, help Anna, these people that are at the border, that are, are crossing over. We've been praying for the situation there. We need to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that we're able to, to help. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful to see the church come together in such a desperate time to bring encouragement right. to all those who are who are suffering. And so we always like to bring a scripture to you and the Psalms are a fantastic place to go, especially when we're going through hard times. I mean, today's scripture is Psalm 71, 18, and it says this, even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. And so, Tom, I just love this scripture and it's very applicable because, you know, David was still, he was going through very difficult times and really relying on God to be his refuge and asking God not to forsake him so that he could declare all the ways that he had seen God's faithfulness and goodness throughout his life. I love that too. And I love the fact that it's, it's about telling about the real God who really lives, who really loves, who really cares for us. And we need to share that with all of our hearts to the next generation so they know that God. Well, we have a great interview coming up that Sydney did with the prophets. And you're going to enjoy this. Let's go to Sydney. Our next guests have a heart and desire for fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, both the younger and older to come together in the body of Christ for the kingdom of God. In the book, When Generations Run Together, the stories of Elijah's and Elisha's, Elizabeth Timefoot compiled the stories of 12 spiritual leaders who shared their journeys of growing in faith and how to equip the next generation. We're so happy to have with us today, Elizabeth Timefoot, Pastor Jane Hammond and Jamie Galloway. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Great to be with you, Sydney. And Elizabeth, I first want to start with you. Tell us what inspired you to compile this book. And also, can you break down for us this concept of Elisha's and Elijah's? Yeah, yeah. I, actually, it's my life message. And um, when I was in Bible school, I we went to one of the most amazing Bible schools. And when I left there, I remember some of my friends would fall away. They would be some of the most on fire people we were, were that were in revival with us. And I was wondering, I was like, what if like the older generation helps us? What if they come alongside of us and help us, you know, and we actually do it together? And I think out of watching my friends go through so much pain. And I, I think it kind of birthed a little bit of that with me. And as, as God invited me on the journey, it's, you know, like, it's not easy. You know, when Elijah said, Hey, it's a hard thing. You, you have to learn how to do it. And I think, um, you know, years down the road, I actually went to a conference and uh, Joan uh, Hunters and uh, Jane was actually there. And so she gave me a word. I had been on a fast, a partial fast that whole week. And part of the word was, of course, building international young prophets. But the second part of the word she gave me was God would teach me about Elijah and Elisha at a different level in this season. And it was a very accelerated season <laughs> for me. Um, I had to learn a lot really quick. And so I felt like, could I take my journey and have the leaders that I trust that I've actually watched um, live out this life, not just talk about it, but actually live out whether being an Elijah or Elisha and actually do it. And so this is what we lay down in the books because I feel like even in the Jewish calendar, it's, you know, it's a year of the house, a year of the home. And I, I wanted to give people some tools um, 
you know, how to do it right and how to just like being it for the long haul. We I've watched so many batons drop and it grieves me on the inside because I go like, we can actually do this together if we if we fight for each other. If we say, hey, you know, you're worth it. You're worth to stand by your, you know, on either side, whether you're an Elisha or an Elijah. And so um, I've had the privilege of running, I mean, like running alongside amazing Elijahs in my life. You know, Jane is one of those that's really impacted my life profoundly. And so, um, you know, like even she could share, you know, we've had tough days, but in the end, it's like, we go, we're still here with each other and it's worth it. And we love each other. And so, um, I just want to tell people it's worth it in the end. It's worth it for the double portion. It's worth it to love your Elijah. It's worth it to, um, be standing there and so fight for it. I love that so much. And Pastor Jane, I just want to go to you next. Can you just tell us what the significance of understanding, you know, this relationship between the Elijahs and Elishas and what that looks like? Because some people may not be familiar with that concept and term. Can you talk to us about it? Sure. Of course, the story comes out of uh, Second Kings, mostly chapter two, um, when you actually see um, Elijah, Elijah passing a mantle to Elijah and uh, to Elisha. And so what happened is that Elisha had to run after it. And Elijah had to be willing to release that impartation to him before before he was taken away from the earth. And I've actually been very privileged to be a part of a multi-generational ministry. My father-in-law, Dr. Bill Hammond, was the, the father of the modern prophetic movement. So I've had the unique positioning of being raised as an Elisha um, to an Elijah. But now I'm in a position that I'm actually raising um, and, and imparting to my own Elishas. And so I, I understand the importance. I'm a recipient and uh, one that's been blessed by having that, that mentoring connection, that father heart connection to the, the generation that's gone before me. Um, now that I'm getting older, I don't like to call them the older generation, <laughs> but the generation that goes before. Um, and so, and now we've got a whole generation that's coming after us. So um, in our church, in our ministry, on any given Sunday, you can come in and find four generations running together, working together um, on the platform and services and, and uh, that prophetic anointing being passed one generation to the next. But it's really imperative that we learn how to uh, support one another, as Elizabeth was saying, um, and understand that it's that it's our own responsibility to run after it, to go after it, but then utilizing the the blessings of the generations to actually build into the future. You know, he, uh, when uh, when David broke through, his father's house broke through. When Esther broke through, Mordecai broke through. And so really it goes throughout the scripture where you see one generation being a blessing to the next. And it's not always the older blessing the younger. Sometimes it is the younger blessing the older. And I think that we just have to come down to the bottom line and say, we need each other. We absolutely need each other. What one generation fights for and breaks through in, if we're not imparting that to the next generation, we leave it for them to start all over again and break through in those same areas. And so I think that the body of Christ is getting smarter. And I think that we're going to learn how to build on the victories of the previous generation to build on the breakthroughs of the previous generation and build generation to generation. Jane, I love that so much about the generations running together. And Jamie, you know, you've experienced this in your life. I was reading in the book about with your natural father and also your spiritual father and receiving sort of the double portion. Can you share a little bit of your story and your testimony? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sydney. And I really appreciate Elizabeth for putting this together because uh, what a timely message, an incredible message. And what Jane was saying, I too am a recipient uh, of, of many of the Elijahs that in our generation have been, uh, you know, front and center. And, um, you know, it's awesome because you get to glean from so many. But then there's a change uh, of the guard where the transition begins to take place and the baton is passed. And so you begin to move in what you've seen imparted to you. And um, so for me, it was a great, I, my, my beginnings uh, started with my family, my father, but then spiritually my beginnings uh, continued with uh, Dr. Randy Clark. And so for a number of years I traveled and uh, was by his side watching him. And um, that was such an, a remarkable time for me. What an impression he made on my life. And, um, and we still do things together and I still learn from him. And, uh, you know, and he'll call and he'll say, hey, what are you doing with what I put in you? 
And, you know, he, he had imparted to me something really powerful. You know, I love the story of Elijah and Elisha, but it backs up actually to a previous story of Elijah. And uh, I have a sneaky suspicion that Elisha was kind of in the shadows. He was in the background, kind of like a fly on the wall, watching Elijah call down fire from heaven. And so uh, there is a moment where Elijah, he does something that really sets the stage for a revival, for a change that begins in Israel during a very dark time. And right now we are in a dark time. And so we need the Elijahs, we need the Elishas to stand up and we need them to see each other. But one of the things that Elijah did that I got to see in Dr. Clark and many others uh, that I run today with, uh, Troy Brewer and many, many others, Patricia King, I watched them and Elijah did this. He modeled sacrifice. When he, when he went and called on the name of the Lord and he called down fire in front of the, the prophets of Baal, he modeled sacrifice. And I watched that, uh, you know, as they pursued the call of God on their life, I watched them model sacrifice. And it didn't, it, it wasn't, you know, something that they, uh, they always handled with, you know, we have these fairy tale ideas about how leaders handle uh, problems and, and uh, they too are human. And so they had to seek the Lord on, on their knees and they had to seek the Lord. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just like they walked through something without dealing with real struggle or real trouble. But I watched them time and time again. And every time they faced adversity, every time they faced a challenge, they always rose to the occasion and went to the next level. And so that I believe is one of the most powerful keys that Elijah's can impart in this time is to model sacrifice, to call on the name of the Lord, and to really adopt this next generation. Who is the Elisha? Who are the Elishas? And so I'm grateful to be a little part of that in this moment. I love that so much because I know for my generation, there's so many people that are hungry for that mentorship, that discipleship, but how sacrifice has to be modeled. And Elizabeth, I want to just ask you this question, you know, why is God saying now more than ever that people need to understand the next emerging generation of what it means to be Elisha, to just serve and to watch and how we are called to run together? Yeah, actually this past weekend, well, two weekends ago, I was in Charleston and I felt like the Lord started to download to me um, about how to get the inheritance. You have to you have to go through the generation. So like, say like the Elijah, they've already paid the price for their inheritance. And so if you're gonna go through that, that's why it says uh, honor your mother and father so it goes well with you. Uh, let's say it a different way. Oh, honor your mother and father so you can get your inheritance, you know, because honor mm. is actually a really important key to getting your inheritance. So as a Lord, I said, Lord, if I'm going to teach this, I usually have tons of scriptures to what I do, you know, like what you share. And I said, you need to give me a scripture. And then the Lord said to me, Psalm 2, 8. So I actually went and looked in the original uh, Hebrew on what's a part about inheritance. And it says a portion in your father's house. And so you act, we have to understand how God functions in the kingdom and it's always through the generations and so to get the possession because you know you have books right now i'm reading the book um uh possessing the gates of the enemy and we talk about the possessions getting the possessions of nations and cities and regions but if you don't do it generationally that's why we don't have one city in the usa changed yet because we have to understand the generations actually comes first to get the inheritance of regions and cities and so i'm kind of just working you know, like, I think God's just revealing it to all of us. And I love what Jane said, you know, like the church is getting smarter. Like we're figuring out that if we don't have the generation components, we're not going to get the inheritances of cities and regions. And so I, I just feel like we're not doing it for that. We're doing it because we love God and it's, but that's the way he functions. And so if we can do it the kingdom way, we'll actually inherit cities and regions. And so I'm really passionate about the generations running together because I, you know, we're tired of brokenness in families. We're tired of brokenness in church. And so God is pulling back and he's saying, Hey, I died for a whole family and I'm going to, I'm going to pull my family together. And so I don't know, there's beauty. Like I actually feel like I wouldn't even be doing half the things I'm doing if it wasn't for the people that have paid the price above me. I'm standing on their shoulders saying, Hey, like mm -hmm. it's not my turn. It's our turn. We actually get to do it all together. And so they actually give me strength. You know, people, 
that are my age and can encourage me, but the people above me actually give me strength. And so even the things that we do on the road or we prophesize or our national prophetic summit, I feel like the they give me breath and they give me strength to actually do it. I don't know that I'd have that without them. So God is just, I think God's doing so much where we all strengthen each other. That is so good. And you know, Pastor Jane, we have about two minutes left in this segment. And can you just take a moment just to speak to the hearts of people? And I know there's so many that are watching that are crying out for their children, trying out, crying out for, you know, their families and just nations and cities for revival to truly take place. Can you take a moment and pray for those people? Well, one, one thing I want to encourage everybody is that this revival that God is bringing is going to touch families. Literal family lines are going to be touched and transformed. Your prodigals, God is going after the prodigals right now to turn them around. But then I also feel like there's those that are so frustrated and so focused on the, the dysfunction of your own families that you don't realize the spiritual family that God has connected you to. So whether or not your parents are serving the Lord or following after God, God can connect you to a spiritual mother, to a spiritual father. You may be a parent and say, well, my children are out living in the world. Let me just say, there is you, there is such a need for spiritual mothers and fathers. And so I feel like there's some people that are watching right now that are just so focused on what's happening that isn't happening in your own natural family. And the Lord's saying, I wanna connect you to a spiritual family. Yes, I wanna do a miracle in your own family, but there's a spiritual family that God wants to connect mothers and fathers and sons and daughters in this season of time. And I feel like that there's some people that you've just been looking for your place and you haven't really re-engaged since the, the pandemic. And the Lord says he's opening up the doors for proper connection in your churches so that mothers and fathers can take their place. So I'm speaking to you this morning by the word of the Lord and saying, take your place, mothers and fathers, take your place sons and daughters and go after the calling of intergenerational, multi-generational ministry. God's going to connect you heart to heart and be very effective with the kingdom of God. So Father, I bless them now. I bless natural families and I bless spiritual families. And I pray, Father God, for the supernatural connection, God, that brings tremendous kingdom influence in this next season in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That is so good. And our prayer line is on the screen and you can give us a call at 888-665-4483 and connect to that word because we are believing for revival for families, our cities, our nation and our world to be transformed like never before because the generations, all different ages, all different backgrounds are all going to run together and see God like never before. Pastor Jane, Jamie and Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us today and just pouring out your heart and your wisdom and your knowledge is such a blessing. And I encourage all of you, the book is called When Generations Run Together Stories of Elijah's and Elisha's and is available on Amazon. We all also have it on our website, a link at ctvn.org. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Have you ever wondered what heaven is going to be like? Will we really have bodies? Will animals be there? Will we recognize our loved ones? How can we know for sure we'll get to heaven? In Randy Alcorn's book, Heaven, he provides us with a thoroughly researched and biblically definitive description of heaven. Alcorn addresses our most serious questions about heaven, including the nature of judgment, while also answering a few less serious questions like, will we have cafe mochas to sip on in the morning? Readers will develop a deeper understanding of our eternal destination and find the courage to strive for heaven while living on earth. Request your copy of the book, study guide, and booklet when you give. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. We're so glad that you're spending time with us here on Hope Today. Right before the break, we listened to a, a great conversation about the power of generations running together. And I tell you what, this topic is so near and dear to my heart because I have personally experienced the power of older generations speaking into my life and then um, the power of me being able to speak into younger people's lives. You know, I think about um, the, 
the older generations, or as Jane likes to call it, the generation that has gone before. And I have a, a dear teammate. Um, her name is Marianne Skiba. You might even know her. And she is working from home, and she gets to speak into our lives through Zoom calls, through telephone calls. And I think about my mom impacting her grandchildren through FaceTime, through texting. They're truly those of you who have lived a number of years on this earth. You have seen the goodness of God in your own life. You have seen how he has brought you through. And I don't want you to think for one second that you don't have value to invest in a younger person. They are hungry. They are looking to you to speak into the places that they're just now trying to walk through and trying to figure out. So spend some time talking to God so that he can first affirm the gifts and the value that's in you and then open your eyes to the opportunities, to the, the people who are in your life right now that you can speak into. That's so good, Anna. And, and it's true so much that we, we don't have to be perfect. I'm one of those ones that have lived a number of years on the earth. And I think back to all the people that invested in me, the incredible amount of, of people that God put in my life, Anna, that were just there, just to, 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 to bring me along on this journey. Right. You know, and how important that is. So that's, that's a ministry that God has for all of us, especially if you've been a parent, if you've been a Sunday school teacher, if you've been some kind of just a, 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 a mom, that, I think of my daughter-in-law and the, the kids are from the neighborhood are in her house all the time. It's beautiful. You know, and, and th that kind of thing is, is something that is, is a mentoring ability, a mentoring mm -hmm. gift that God is placing in your life. And so think about it this day. Who, who has God given you to influence? Think of all the people that God put in your life, just like I said, that have helped you to draw closer to God. Now, you can go and be that. And you don't have to be perfect, mm -hmm. you know? Anna said that while we were listening to the, the interview. is like, yeah. uh, not perfect. We're not perfect, right? Right. And, and, but we are ones that have something to say. Yeah, I remember when I was um, mentoring a group of young moms and I thought that they were looking for somebody who had it all together, that had it all perfect, but it wasn't until I got vulnerable and got real and just shared part of my life with them that they trusted me and let me in. People are just looking for love and acceptance and wisdom and you have that. You have an opportunity to invest in a big way. That's right. So thank you so much for joining us today and take this, this little message and just run with it. Run with someone from a younger generation that you can bring closer to God. Have a great day.